the new camera API to get access to the camera of the MetaQuest is here. And after learning the fundamentals to display the camera in a texture in last video, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT Vision in Mixed Reality to create description of object. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video, where this time I will show you how to use Unity Synthes to wrap an AI model inside the VR headset that we can use with our camera API. Now you can get access to the source code on my Patreon and even access exclusive content like this tool that I've been working on which can analyze your project and optimize it in one click. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are back where we were left at the end of last episode with here the webcam texture manager prefab and the little script that we made to kind of take a picture with the path through and position it exactly in front of the player. So make sure that you watch the previous video if you want to get to this part. But anyway, now we are doing something very different because here our goal is to create um, an image with the path through camera and send it to ChatGPT to give us some information about what we are holding. So how can we do this? Let me just select the two things that we added last time and just disable them because, yeah, we won't need them anymore. We are going to add our own stuff. And the first thing that I want to do is actually add a ChatGPT SDK here. And I actually found this awesome open AI package by Rage Against the Pixel, awesome name also, <laughs> that you can simply add to your project following this step. So if we go back to Unity, we need to go to Windows, Package Manager, there you go it should open right there and if we click on the three little dots and that we go to project settings this should open the project settings for the package manager and now we need to add some stuff here to add the open ar package the first thing we need to add is here the name open upm right there the next thing is here the url which we can copy and paste right away and for the scope we have two things to add com.open AI and then if I click on the plus button I can add the second one which is com.utilities. Beautiful. Now we can click on save. There you go. Now this seems good. And there we go. Now that we've closed this window, we can simply see on the left side that if we click on my registry, we have here the OpenAI package with all of the different utilities and we can simply click on install. Okay, so now the package is installed. That is awesome. Okay, so now that the OpenAI package is downloaded, the next step is to add a API configuration, which we can do by right clicking, going to create, then OpenAI, then OpenAI configuration. And there you go. If we press enter, you can see that it is missing here the API key which we can actually create from OpenAI developer website. I uh, will leave in uh, the description down below the link. So it is simply platform.openai.com. And here you can actually create a new key by simply clicking over there. There you go. We can give a name. I'm going to name mine camera API key and then click on create secret key. We can now click here to copy this key and we can click on done. And there you go. If we go back to Unity, we can simply paste back here the key. Awesome. And now if I click back on the project window, you can see that there is like a processing that's being done. Oh, and after processing, as you can see, there is a weird stuff that just happened because we don't have the API configuration here anymore. And it is now inside the resource folder, which is actually good. But for some reason, it has removed here the API key that we just pasted a few seconds ago. So don't forget to paste back here the key that we add again. And now we have the OpenAI configuration right there on the resource folder with a key. So everything should be good. It is reprocessing, but this time it is not removing the OpenAI configuration. And now everything is cool. We can make finally some web requests to OpenAI, which is awesome. And let me show you how we can do this. I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go to create empty and call this one path through camera description. Beautiful. I'm going to reset its position to 000, zero, zero. click on add component and add a component of the same name. So path through camera description. Beautiful. So inside the script, we have a few things to add at the top. The first one is using open AI. The second one is using open AI dot chat, then using open AI dot models. And there you go. It should be good like this. Now, there you go. What I'm going to do is go down below and I'm going to create a new public void function called submit image. There you go. So the first step is to create a new open AI client by doing var API equals new open AI client. Beautiful. 
And as you can see, this can take as a parameter an open AI configuration. So we can actually add it at the top. So do public open AI configuration, which I will call configuration. And we can pass this variable inside the OpenAI client right there. Beautiful. So this will basically create a session of OpenAI that we can use to have a conversation with the robot. But to have a conversation, we need to add some messages. And in my case, I'm going to create a new variable called messages, which will be a new list of... Oh, and here it doesn't recognize the list element because we actually need to go at the top and add using system.collection dot generic beautiful we can add a new list of message the first message that i want to add is the system message which we can set to new message role dot system and then we can write you are a helpful assistant then the second message that we can do is image message and do new message role dot user and then here, the next thing that it needs is actually a certain content. So I'm going to actually add a new list of content, which I will call image content equals new list of content. And here for the content, the first element of the content can be a string. So we can do string text content equals what's in this image. And then the other thing that we can do is directly add a texture to the called image content and this is where things get interesting because for this we can add a public variable of texture 2d so i'm going to do public texture 2d image to analyze and then set the image content to be the image to analyze here i forgot to add an s for the image content because it needs to be different than the other one and there you go now for the image content we can add as the first element the text content and for the second element, we can add the image content. And finally, we can set the image content over there on our second message. Okay, so at this point, we have created a list of message. We have two message right there. The first message is just a text, but the second message contains a text and an image. Now what's left is to add these two messages to our message list by doing messages that add system message and a message that add image message. And with these two messages, we can create our chat request by doing var chat request equals new chat request, add our messages. And if you'd like, we can even at this point set a certain model for chat GPT. There is a lot of things that we can actually tweak. As you can see, uh, we can say more than the type of model that we want to answer. We can change, for example, the chat response format. We can change the maximum number of tokens and more. But because we are just looking into setting the models, we are just going to do model.gpt40. Beautiful. Okay, so at that point, we have made a chat request and what's left is to actually wait for the result of this chat request, which we can do by var result equals await API dot chat endpoint. And here, after calling the chat endpoint, we can call dot get completion async and give as our parameter the chat request. Now, there is just a little issue here with our result is that this await things is used for an asynchronous function, which means that it will wait for the result to complete before assigning here this result value. And our function here, submit image, is not asynchronous, but we can fix this by simply adding async at the top. And there you go. Now it is done. Everything is good. And here with the result, we can do basically anything we want. Now to just give you an example, what we can do is simply write in the console the first answer by ChatGPT with debug.log result dot first first choice. Beautiful. And now there is basically only one thing to do, and it is to test if this function is working. We can actually call it on the start of the game just to find out if this works. So let me call this submit image over there, save the script and go back to Unity. Okay, so as you can see, there is two things that we need, the configuration and the image to analyze. For the configuration, we can go to resources and drag the open AI configuration over there directly. And for the texture 2D, you can basically use anything. Now, in my case, I have a beautiful image of a corgi over there, which I can just drag. So let me drag it over there in the texture 2D. And let's find out if ChatGPT is able to explain what's inside here, this image. So to find out, let's simply click on the play button over there. 
there you go we need to wait a little bit of course and as you can see we actually have an error it says that the texture corgi is not readable of course so what we need to fix this is select back the corgi texture and enable here the read write then we can click on apply and now if we press on play again there you go there is another issue it says that the encode function do not support compressed texture format so what we actually need to do is here on the compression not set it to normal quality but set it to none and then if we click on apply and that we press on play again will this work this time and there you go as you can see it works after making the texture write and read enable and then uncompress it as you can see chat gpt give an answer it says that this image shows a happy corgi dog standing in a grassy area and indeed it is right so that is awesome but of course that is not the end of the tutorial because Yes, the goal is to do this not with a corgi image, of course, but to do this with what the path through camera sees. And, and so let me show you how we can make it work. Okay, so in the previous video, what we did was actually create a picture of the path through camera. And we actually did it through the script, which was able to take like a picture. And this is exactly what we are going to do. So I'm going to copy this take picture function and put it in our path through camera description script. But this function needs two things, a webcam manager and then a picture. So we can simply add these two at the top by first adding using path through camera sample and then doing public webcam texture manager and calling it webcam manager beautiful and then next for our texture let's do private texture 2d and call it picture again beautiful now that it's done we can remove these two lines where we are changing the renderer which we are not using anymore and there you go so this seems good so what we can do is like last time we can copy here uh, what's inside the update function and paste it back because what we are doing now is if the webcam manager is enabled and that the player press on the A button, what we want is take a picture. But after taking a picture, what we want is also submit the image to ChatGPT. Now, of course, right now, the image submitted to ChatGPT is using here this image to analyze. We can now add our picture image that is created with the take picture function. And we are almost done because what I want to do is actually display what ChatGPT thinks of the image that we are sending. But right now, the result is displayed on debug.log. So what we can actually do is add at the top using TM Pro. And what we can do is add public text mesh pro UGUI result text over there. And now what we can do is go back and we can simply do result text the text equal result dot first choice. And there you go. This way we will be able to display what ChatGPT thinks of our image into a text. So now let's save, go back to Unity. Let's create a little text that will be able to display the ChatGPT answer by right clicking, going to UI and then to canvas. There you go. This will create a big canvas, which we can turn into word space. I'm going to right click again and add a UI image. Now, if I select here this little icon on the image, press on the Alt button and then click here, this will stretch the image to the size of the canvas. And I'm going to actually change the color of the image to be a bit darker like this. But then I can also right click and go this time to UI text text mesh pro. We can click on import TMP essentials if it's not already done. Now, if I close this window, we can in the same uh, way stretch here the size of the text by uh, pressing on the Alt key and clicking over there. And now in my case, I'm going to center the text like this. And now everything is good. I can write anything that I want and it will be shown inside here. So now what's left is to actually place the canvas uh, somewhere in our world, but just to have something a bit easy. I'm just going to place it in front of the eyes of the player. So for this, let's set the scale to 0 0.001 on all axis. Beautiful. We can now drag here the canvas under the center eye and shore, and we can reset its position to 0, 0. Now, if we double click on the canvas, we should see it here. And I'm going to actually scale it down a little bit and move it a little bit forward like this. There we go. For the image, I think it would be also better if we decrease here the transparency. Yeah, something like this should work. And we can even go to the image and increase a little bit the size of the font as well. 
And you know what, instead of putting it as a child of the eyes, I think I'm going to put it as a child of the right end. So I'm going to simply drag it under the right end like this. I'm going to reset again its position and simply like this, turn the canvas and put it to the side of the right end, which might be a bit easier to get some information and display them. Okay, so now the canvas is there. It contains a background and a text and it is displayed under the right hand and shore. Now what we can do is simply go to the path through camera description and drag our text over there on the result text. Now everything is done. We, we can also drag the webcam texture manager there and I can still see that we have the Corgi as an image to analyze. So let me go back here and let's actually remove these parameters. Now if we save, go back to Unity, it is not there anymore and I think that everything is now ready. We have everything configured to test our application. So one thing is still missing and it is to build. So let's go to file and click on build and run. Okay guys, this is the moment of truth. Let's find out if ChatGPT can say what I'm looking at inside this headset. For example, if I, yeah, if I take the headphones and that I press on the A button on my right controller, what will he say? And there you go, it works. As you can see, it says headphones on arm. The image shows a pair of black over here headphone placed on a person arm. The setting includes a desk with a computer, keyboard, mouse, and several monitors. There is a water bottle on the desk as well. Now, of course, it is describing a lot of things, but that is something that we can actually tweak. Now, if we go back to the script, as you can see, we give as input two kind of messages, the message for the system and another, which is assigned with the picture that we are sending. But of course, we can tweak these as we want. So for example, we can say, describe the image in five words. Don't write anything bold, just plain text. We can even add, just describe the main element at the center of the image and in your, the main object maybe, and in your everything else. And basically, by tweaking these two messages, you can like fine tune what you want ChatGPT answer to be like, which is very helpful, as you can imagine. And because we are using VR, we can also say in your the arm and in your the hand and in your the VR controller in your description. Now let's build again to find out how this is looking. Now let's find out how this is working with the uh, new text that we've sent to ChatGPT. If now I press on A, there you go. As you can see, it works. It was able to describe that this is a black teapot on a desk. That is very cool. And there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and that you are ready for the next one about using Unity Synthes to add an AI model directly in our VR headset. If you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you very soon. Bye bye.